So, um, I've lost my train of thought and I totally forgot what I was talking about. What's the difference between a junior and a senior game developer? That's what we're gonna talk about today. This is actually a question that comes up a lot, probably from junior developers who are looking to get into a senior developer role. So if that's you, please hit the thumbs up button and drop a comment and let me know. Of course, you can hit the thumbs up button even if you're not, and I hope that you do. And uh, you can subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. So let's get started with the first big difference, because there are a lot of big differences between a junior developer and a senior developer. And the first one, the one that I think stands out for everybody and is kind of the default that people will tell you, is that you need to be able to take an idea or a task from that idea state and make it into reality with little to no help. Ideally, a senior developer on most things can take a task like go add this system to our game, go create this tool, and build the majority of it or all of it on their own without needing too much outside assistance. A junior developer, on the other hand, would not be expected to do that. Usually, you, if you're going to build a system as a junior developer, you're going to have a whole lot of help. Or if you're going to build something new, you're going to have a lot of outside help from the senior team so they can guide you to doing it the correct way and going through the steps the the proper way so that you build the right thing and that they don't have to replace it later and that takes a lot of time so it means that junior developers end up working quite a bit slower and they also eat up a lot of senior developer time it's kind of one of the reasons that you see a lot of positions not open to junior developers and like only hiring senior developers because if the junior developer is not going to hang around long enough to become an intermediate or senior developer and kind of level up those skills then it ends up being kind of a cost and it, it can be problematic so it's good to have experienced people on your team it's also good to bring in junior people if you're going to mentor them and train them up most places probably aren't going to do a very good job of that though and they're going to expect you to learn outside of work they're going to expect that your skills get better over time and usually it's very rare that your skills are going to grow that much during work hours. They're going to grow some, but you're going to have to be learning outside of work. Every senior developer that I know, I, I, at least every de senior developer that I can think of, does some coding outside of work. Most of them do a good amount of coding outside of work because they like it. Or some game development. Some of them are designers, game designers that do design stuff and they get really into it outside of work. Same with artists. It's You're going to need to learn and expand your skills beyond the things that you're using at work because you're going to need to be able to, as a senior developer, present new ideas and present new workflows and new ways to do things new solutions to the problems that are coming up. And that's one of the key things that senior developers do. They look for and present solutions to the problems that you have as a team. This could be anything from adding a new tool or a workflow, maybe some performance diagnostic stuff, some monitoring tools, or maybe a new code workflow, or even just building in a new system. I mean, I've seen situations in the past where we had issues with the game, maybe like one where the pathing wasn't great, and one of the guys on the team said, you know what, I'm going to go redo the pathing system and make it up to par with where I think it should be for our game, and just did that on their own. I've seen lots of things like that where people take on these tasks and take the problems that we have, find solutions for them, and often end up getting promoted. Or those are already the senior developers because they've been doing that and they have a habit of trying to make the game and the team better all the time. Also, the Ultimate Game Dev course is still live. Half of the seats were filled in the first few days, so we're not sure when the course will be sold out. So if you're looking to take your game development skills to the next level, go check it out now and get your seat while it's still available. For those of you who don't know, the Ultimate Game Dev course is a huge bundle where Thomas Brush and I have put all of our courses together along with some great bonuses. The course has over 160 hours of content and will teach you everything you need to know to become a professional game developer. You'll learn everything from writing clean and scalable code to mastering 2D and 3D art. You'll learn how to launch your games and much more while building a variety of game types. You can check it out and grab your seat by clicking the link in the description. So let's talk about how to get promoted to a senior position because that's that's an important task and it's probably the reason that a lot of people are watching this. And the first thing that I want to say is that the easiest way to get that promotion by far, almost always, is to just switch positions, switch jobs to another company and you're going to see usually a big salary jump as well as a position jump. You go from a junior to intermediate or perhaps intermediate to senior and when they say intermediate usually just listed as like developer or programmer or something like that there's usually no 
word in between there. They'll put junior on the ones they want to super underpay that are low on experience, senior on the ones where they expect you to be able to do the job nearly from day one, maybe from month one at least, to be active and productive within the first couple of weeks. And then intermediate where they don't put anything, just kind of they're in between and they're hoping that you're senior near the cost of a junior, really. It's kind of kind of the goal, but they were hoping to find somebody who's going to turn into a great senior programmer very fast at that intermediate level. Now, if you like your company and you want to stay there, though, you can still level up and get promoted, at least in most companies. And there are a couple things that I would recommend that you do along with you know being able to handle the basic tasks. The first one is pretty simple, and it's to strive to write the cleanest code that you can, not slowly though so that don't let it overwhelm your time and take overtake stuff but when you're writing out your code make sure that you write it so that when the other people on your team see it they smile you want them to look at it and be like oh, okay i get this i understand this this is easy to understand easy to use and just works you don't want it to be some complicated thing where they have to go debug and track down and attach and you know step through stuff to try to figure out what's going on or even worse have to come ask you questions constantly about how to use your code because it's confusing you have variables named a b and c and d3 or whatever don't be that developer just be the one who writes clean stuff and when you're keeping things clean also make sure that you write your code commits clean your comments that you write when you do a commit in your source control make sure that you write things that are proper that makes sense that explain what's in the commit and are actually readable don't you know just if everybody's got a casing everything is written nicely make sure that you match it and don't go in there and mess it all up or don't don't put in notes that are somewhat useless because when people go through there they see your name right next to the note and the quality of the patch note or not necessarily the patch note the commit note that you're putting in there it's a patch, I meant commit note. The quality of that commit note, though, is going to be associated with your name. It's right next to it. And I've written some really terrible ones in the past. I, I totally understand. I'm sure you probably have to. If you've seen some really terrible ones, please drop a comment down below and let me know what the worst one is. I've seen some bad ones. I feel like I should sh should share sometime. But um, that doesn't mean that I have to keep writing bad ones. So now I try, whenever I'm on a real team with other people, do my hardest to write really good commit notes so that people understand what has changed and uh, what to expect when they grab that commit and not just think like, oh, there's something in here, I don't know what it is. If you want an even easier tip though, I would recommend being good at communicating or being fast with your communication and clear. When people have a question on the team, just reply right away with an answer that makes sense. And be sure not to be defensive. Don't get um, defensive and argumentative with the team. That'll just hold you back. There's really no benefit there. So make sure that if there's a question like, hey, how does this system work? Why does this thing do this? Or is anybody working on this? If, if you know the answer, just communicate. The more you communicate, the more likely you are to be seen by the people who are making the decisions, who do the promotions, which is another important thing. You've got to be visible to, you know, or at least your work has to be visible. And the more that you respond to people and reply to people, the happier they'll be with you and the more likely you are to get up into that senior position. There's one other thing that I think is really important to do, though, and that's to help out the rest of the team. Because really the core difference between a senior developer and a regular, maybe non-senior but non-junior developer, is that ability to really mentor and help the team and help specific members who need issues or who have issues and need help with specific things. So if you're at the point where you're at the company and there are things that you're better at than other people and they're having a problem with it and you see that, offer to help. I mean, don't stop doing your work completely and don't you know offer to do the work for them and take it over necessarily because you got to make sure that you're getting your job done too. But offer to help and offer some guidance and assistance. If you see that they're doing something the hard way, say, hey, there's an easier way. If you see that they're maybe, maybe they're not a programmer, they're a designer or they're an artist or a QA person on your team and you see that they're doing something that's eating up a lot of their time and really time consuming and they're struggling with it and you know that you can easily write some code and make that automated or simplify that process, talk to them, offer that up and see what you can do. You got to look proactively for ways that you can help the team and make everything better, make the team more productive, make it so that your game is more likely to release and be a big success and uh, just be great like that. So yeah, I mean, that's, 
I guess the entirety of my advice on the, the differences between junior and senior developers, there's probably some things that I missed. And if there are, if you have one, please drop a comment down below. I'd love to do a follow-up and maybe even like a, a big long episode about this, maybe on the game dev show, just talk about the, the core differences and kind of do a round table on it. I don't know. If that sounds interesting, please drop a comment, let me know, and maybe we'll follow up more on this, have a, a deeper discussion about how to really level up these skills or level up this position and what the best opportunities are. I hope this was helpful. If so, please thumbs up button and all that stuff, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Also, don't forget to check out the Ultimate Game Dev course by clicking the link in the description. The offer is limited to only 150 seats and over half have already been sold, so make sure to grab yours before they're all gone.